Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you what's inside of my camera bag for 2020. If you guys are new here, I'm a fashion and lifestyle photographer working with clients local and abroad. I am currently based in New York City and I do a fair bit of traveling so therefore I like to have my equipment as minimal as possible for mobility and for stealth while moving in and out of these different locations. Let's jump right into it. The bag that I have here, this is the Hex Raven bag. I'm actually a huge fan of this bag. I did purchase this myself in 2018, so it's held up pretty good. So part of the reason that I love this bag is because it's sleek, it's super stylish. It's lasted quite a long time. As I said before, I've had this since 2018. I also love the material on it and I like the fact that it doesn't look like a camera backpack. I also like the fact that because it's a low profile bag, you can actually slide it under the seat in front of you on an airline. I also like the fact that you can access your camera from this top part here. So you can pull it out and while I have this out, might as well get into it. This is the Sony a7 III with the Tamron 24-70 to 2.8 lens and the Sigma MC11 adapter. What I also like about the Sony a7 III is that this one has really good autofocus. Uh, the eye autofocus is also really good in photo mode and the continuous focus is really good in video, especially with native Sony lenses or with Sigma lenses and the MC11 adapter. So another reason I like the Sony a7 III is because it has really good technology inside of it. Transferring to mobile wirelessly while on the go is one of the best things. The Sigma MC11 adapter is a staple on this camera because I am coming over from the Canon ecosystem. If you're a beginner photographer and you're looking for your first lens, I would say look into the 24-70 2.8. There's a lot of options available, whether that's Craigslist or eBay or Amazon used. You can find a great deal on that and I highly recommend it. It's probably the lens I use 90% of the time. Most of these lenses, even brand new, are still one third or one half the cost of some of the Sony lenses. We could talk about that more in a minute, but this Tamron 24-70 2.8 provides a good amount of range. So you have the 24 at the wide end and the 70 at the long end. What I also like about the Sony a7 III is that you can assign a custom button to turn this from a full frame to a crop sensor, which allows you to punch in on that sensor, and I think that's a great option to have. The other lens that I use for the Sony a7 III is the Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. If I had to choose one prime lens, it will probably be this one. I love the 50mm 1.4 or 1.2, but if you aren't able to get that, the 35mm 1.4 from Sigma, it's magical. It gives the photos this sort of medium format feel, and what I like about this lens is that it's, it's super sharp even at 1.4. It has a metal body which holds up really well. You know, it's great for video as well. It, I highly recommend getting this lens and you can also find these used on eBay or Amazon. Alright guys, the next lens that I wanted to show you is this 35mm 2.8 from Samyang. 35mm 2.8 isn't a lot of bokeh but it is worth it just for the convenience of walking around with this lens. Alright guys, the next camera that we have up is what I use primarily for video. This is the Sony a6500 and truthfully the Sony a6000 line of cameras is actually uh, really remarkable. I do like this one because it offers the same video specs as the Sony a7 III as the a7 line. Obviously it's not full frame, but it does offer the same 4K, the same 1080, the same 120 frames per second, the same 24 frames per second in 4K. Yeah. What I don't like about the Sony system, again, is the price of the lenses. 
Thankfully though, there are so many good options for this size. And I think that this may be the best vlogging camera on the market at the moment. This is currently built out with the small rig cage. The reason for that is because when I'm not using it as a vlog camera, sometimes I'll rig it out with the Atomos Ninja 5, uh, the handle and an external battery. I have a bunch of friends that are musicians, uh, I have some friends that are filmmakers, so I'm often helping out on set or capturing behind the scenes of music videos and things like that. So. It's nice to have a, a lightweight camera that you can build out into something bigger. Currently on this camera, I have the Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens. This 16mm gives the crop sensor Sony a full frame feel of about 24mm. The 1.4 aperture is just awesome on this and then the autofocus combined with this lens, it just works so seamless. I'll throw it on a gimbal or if I'm you know, shooting or having someone do behind the scenes, I'll just give them the gimbal and they can run around with this. A lot of people prefer the 10 to 18 millimeter f4 Sony lens, but even with that lens, I find myself shooting at around 16 anyway. So this one combined with the low light capability as well as the autofocus and the aperture of 1.4, it's an easy sell. On top of that, it's one third the cost of the 10 to 18 f4 sony for crop so keep that in mind the build quality of the sigma art lenses are on point it is super strong it has a nice grippy feel for the focus if you need to go manual focus but again the autofocus on this works so good on this video i have the video micro i used to have the video mic pro but i would often forget to either a turn the microphone on or B turn the microphone off resulting in a dead battery and you would just never know if it was on or off until you got home and realized you weren't recording or you missed something. So with this microphone it doesn't have any batteries, it does not need an on and off switch, you just turn the camera on and it, it will record. So aside from the Sigma 60mm 1.4 lens, I also have the kit lens. The kit lens is a 16 to 50. It's a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture, so that means that when you zoom in, the aperture changes. It's a pretty good lens to have, especially if you need the zoom range. The other equivalent to this, I believe it's like the 18 to 105, which is a little bit longer. It would work on a gimbal as well, but I think that having the stock lens or the kit lens isn't a bad option to have. It's a pancake, so it's super thin. You may find yourself in a situation where you need a longer range and the 16 millimeter is just not cutting it. So it also has power zoom on the lens. The other lens that I have for the Sony a6500 is this 10 to 18 f4 lens. One, this is a very expensive lens. I think it's about $900 as we speak. It's super lightweight. It is optically stabilized. It does give you a really wide frame for the crop sensor. But what is pretty cool about this lens is that from 16 to 18, or maybe even 14, I believe it is, from 14 to 18, it actually can work on a full frame Sony without vignetting in the corners. But what is pretty cool is that because the full frame Sony's can go from crop sensor to full frame, you can actually use this as a 10 millimeter on the crop sensor, which gives you about 16 millimeters anyway. Or you can use it as 18 millimeters on the full frame and get a true 18 millimeter super wide lens. Again, for me, I'm always traveling with two cameras. I have one strictly for video, one strictly for photo. And because the APS-C Sony a6500 is that video camera, this lens comes in handy for that. Since I picked up the Sigma though, I haven't used this as much. One, because of the f4 aperture, it's just not as pleasing as you would need it to be, especially for low light situations. And then with the Sigma shooting it at, you know, 1.4 at f2, it gives it this sort of cinematic quality, which actually makes it look sharper in the long run. So with the f4 10 to 18, 
uh, I just don't find myself using it as much. If you need this thing, I'd say look for a used option if you can, because again, this thing will cost you an arm and a leg. So don't sleep on the used market, guys. Like save your money, you know, get the equipment, make sure it's working and everything else. But definitely save your money for experiences or, you know, for rainy days. Here we have the Ronin SC. I recently picked this one up from having the Jiyun Crane for the last couple of years. I figured it was time for an upgrade. So I picked up the Ronin SC. I do like the technology that DJI is coming out with and I think that it's super helpful, especially if you're traveling solo. Truthfully though, I haven't used any of them. I really just use it as a simple gimbal. All right, also in the bag, we have the Mavic Pro 2. This drone is by far my favorite. I'm a huge fan of the DJI products simply because they've revolutionized the way that you're able to capture things from the sky. One, the image quality is, is amazing. You can't really top that at the moment for something this compact. One of the things that I love about this is that the transmission is so strong. If you've ever flown a drone and you've lost a signal, you know the fear that I'm talking about while the drone is just floating aimlessly somewhere in the sky and you're trying to reconnect the app and hoping that the wind or whatever doesn't push it into a building or into a cliffside somewhere. Having the DJI Mavic Pro 2, it's definitely worth the investment, especially if you're traveling abroad. There are a lot more restrictions while traveling internationally. If you have a drone, most likely they're going to confiscate that and hold it until your departure. And that's happened to me numerous times. But you do always get it back. Uh, I've gotten it confiscated in Nicaragua. I've had it confiscated twice in Dubai. But again, you know, sometimes it's the risk that you take. As long as you can get it back, then you're fine. Also in the bag, I have a Zoom H1. Sometimes I need to do quick voiceovers while I'm on the go, but also I have a little microphone pouch. Uh, in the bag, I think it's a smart investment to always have a GoPro, just in case you're in a situation where you don't want to damage your cameras, or if you want to just record, you know, some behind the scenes or something vlog style, or, you know, strap this to a car or a helicopter. I also have some you know, Tiffin ND filters for some of these cameras. So for flash, you know, coming in from the Canon side, I still have this, uh, this is a 600EX2RT. I still shoot with Canon uh, often. A lot of times if I'm shooting an event or anything like that, I will just use the Canon because it's more of a workhorse. Until I get the Godox flash, I'm just using this one on manual with the Sony or TTL with the Canon. Also in the bag guys, this is probably one of my favorite things to have, whether traveling abroad or local. Aside from being a multi-socket outlet that's in the shape of a cube and is super compact, it also has interchangeable plugs for traveling to and from abroad. In this bag, we have ugh, my laptop. Obviously, you can see that I have Velcro on here. I use that to attach a few different hard drives to my laptop. The Velcro helps to keep those hard drives safe and secure so that there are no drops or disconnections while I'm working and it doesn't put your files at risk. So the laptop is a, I think it's a late 2014 MacBook Pro Retina. It's a 13 inch. I decided to get the smallest laptop with the most power, mainly for portability. Basically, I haven't upgraded this laptop because it's still super reliable. It still runs seamlessly, so I have no issues with it at all. So I have three hard drives. It might seem like overkill. I am working to consolidate them. I have the Lacey 5 terabyte rugged drive. I use this really to back up a lot of the footage or photos that I have for clients while on the road. I also have this WD Passport drive, which is connected primarily to my Dropbox account. I use that drive 
to transfer files while on the road, while working. It pretty much stays connected to my computer at all times. It allows me to transfer files directly to the customer if they need it or previous customers if they need to access their files in a pinch. Sometimes I'm doing shoots and I need to export the file on the spot. So if I'm shooting tethered and it exports out with the preset and then it will upload itself to Dropbox in high res. This way the client has a high res copy of the files that they can review and you know provide feedback. So here's something that you might not see often in camera bags. I have deodorant and a little trimmer. I think sometimes it's important to stay groomed, especially while working with clients or being on the road. You never know where you gotta pop into an airport bathroom and you know wash your pits or something like that. So also here I have this card case. It is housing a few different cards. These are all the Sony UH2 cards. Also in the bag I have I guess maybe some souvenirs but just random denominations of money, some from Egypt, some from Japan. Alright, and while editing or just you know using headphones for audio, I do have these Beats Studio 3s. I really do like how they sync with Apple products. It's just super seamless, so you know I can just turn them on, they connect, or they pop up on the menu and connect. But also for this one, it has the port where you know I can plug in the headphone jack and I can connect directly to the computer or to the armrest on a flight. My word of advice to you or any new filmmaker or photographer that's watching this, master what you currently have and add on to that if you need it. But other than that, invest in experiences over equipment because that's really what's gonna shape your career and your mentality. So that's all I wanted to leave with you guys. So thank you guys for checking out what's in my camera bag for 2020. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe or feel free to check out any of the other videos that's on my channel. Thank you guys, be safe and I'll see you soon. Peace.